Can anybody hear me out there? Welcome to Coronavirus Dataviz Hackathon, Part 1, Popular Coronavirus Dataviz. We will discuss existing popular coronavirus dataviz work. And this is a very hot, hot, hot topic right now. There's so many visualizations coming out about this. So it, before we do our own work, we need to look at, you know, what others have done. In particular, we'll discuss the Johns Hopkins map, our world and data coverage on the topic, and the amazing scatterplot by John Byrne Murdoch. Let's review some existing popular coronavirus data viz work to date. This one here from Johns Hopkins, I've seen it on the news. I've seen multiple news channels put this up as a full screen thing and say this is today's news. And they just read the numbers from the table. I think that's so powerful. Wow. These are very powerful numbers. Uh, and on the map, we've got locations where the size of the circle is the number of cases. And this has some interaction to it where you can click on these various different points. And you know, earlier they had uh, more detailed data. It seems to have changed over time. But anyway, we can get the number of uh, confirmed cases in California, for example. Uh, around 1,200 confirmed cases, around 24 deaths, around 1,000 active cases in all of California. Let's see about New York. I mean, New York is getting hit pretty hard with this. Uh, and Massachusetts has one death and 413 cases. But that's my sort of locality, and the rest of the world has hit so much more, <laughs> you know, it, it's just getting to the U.S. now and the U.K. Um, let's take a look at Italy. Italy's been making headlines with uh, 47,000 confirmed cases and 4,000 deaths. Oh, man. And uh, Iran has also hit pretty hard. So early on, when they first made the first version of this, it was backed by a Google sheet, a Google spreadsheet. And I went in there and I made a comment like, hey guys, can you make this data available like through an API or something or as a CSV file so we can work with it and visualize it? And eventually they did. Imagine that. And uh, I think they have the link right here, GitHub. So they have this GitHub repository with all these data files here. And this is the data that I was thinking of looking at today, be just because it's in CSV format and you know it can easily be downloaded. But before we get into that, I want to show some other visualizations that are popular. Our World in Data by Max Roser does really good coverage of a lot of things. They have so many visualizations in there. And they finally made a piece on coronavirus. And as always, it's epic. It's just amazing. They even compare different data sets. Look at that. That's like, that is high quality right there. See, there's a gap between the WHO data, uh, the European CDC. That's interesting. European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. So anyway, uh, our Johns Hopkins data set is a good candidate to use for visualization from what I can tell here. Uh, looks like these are the others. If anyone wants to dig into those, see if you can uh, get those working, downloaded. So what is this? Total confirmed cases. And this is total confirmed deaths. Wow, see how that slope is changing recently? That's really something. So that's our world in data. Shout out to Max Roser who made that, this site. It's really nice. And there was one other one I really wanted to dig into, which was this visualization by John Byrne Murdoch is quite good. Uh, it's, it has a few interesting things that it's doing. Uh, there's some data pre-processing going on. So notice the starting point is the 10th death date for the country whose line it represents. And so as the virus spreads throughout different countries, you know, they're all sort of ramping up at different points in time. And so this one actually distorts time to, to put them all on the same uh, starting gate, so to speak, so that at the 10th death in that country, that's when the line starts. And 
notice on the y-axis, uh, it's a log scale. Because these curves are, you know, they would look exponential if it were not a log scale. So these are two very nice ways to deal with um, sort of taming this data set. And I'd like to maybe, if we can today, try to make this or something like it. But let's just take a look at this for a second. Uh, here's a straight line of 33% daily increase. Uh, notice that that's an exponential curve, but it's a log scale, so it looks straight. That's why it's a perfectly straight line going through there. And that's what Italy's traje trajectory was for a while. Now it's starting to be a little less than that. Yeah, it's interesting how this visualization puts everything sort of on the same page, and then you can compare the slopes. You know, the U.S. has a change in slope for the past three uh, points here. So that's, that's interesting. I don't know what that is about. And see, China is actually almost flattening out. So that's, see, and, and, you know, because it first happened in China, that's why the, the, the curve for China is so much farther out than the other ones, because the 10th death occurred a lot earlier for China. So I guess we can hope that tra the trajectory for these various countries might look something like China's. That's my take on this. And if that's the case, then uh, the UK is going to get hit so hard. They don't even know what's coming. I can't believe they haven't closed schools yet, or maybe they did. I haven't heard, but uh, that's sort of my takeaway from this. So anyway, this is the amazing piece by John Byrne Murdoch. This page from Information is Beautiful, uh, they've got their <laughs> coronavirus data pack. So I haven't dug into this, but uh, there's a lot here. Um, it just goes to show there's a lot of opportunity for visualization for this data set. This flattening the curve one is, is interesting, too. That was, let me find the original from the CDC, because that was the original. See, there's so many variations of it already. That's crazy, different colors and stuff. Flattening the curve, what does it mean? The x-axis here is the time since the first case. Interesting correlation between that other line chart where they started at the time of the 10th case. So this is how you first, you align everything. All the countries, you can align them. Uh, and then it says, with protective measures, the number of cases over time will be spread out over time. Uh, and without protective measures, there's going to be a surge in the number of cases, then it's going to rapidly drop off. But during that surge, it's going to overwhelm the healthcare system. And so that's why, you know, these measures are in place like social distancing. I wonder if we could do some visualization that in some way we could overlay this or we could say like this country is an example of one of these curves and uh, you know imagine I'm um, just imagine if we could overlay all the countries on top of this and see how how they're doing uh, you know comparing countries that had a lot of measures in place uh, like China versus countries that didn't or were very lax like Italy like I wonder how China and Italy would compare if you did if you like showed them as this curve I don't know that's my summary of what's been done so far uh, regarding data visualization of coronavirus breaking update on this as of March 23rd the data has county level resolution for the United States check this out if you hit full screen here and zoom in to the United States, you get county level resolution. I think this is a game changer. There's gonna be a lot of people watching this map and these numbers are gonna update over time. So get started building some cool visualization where you can scrub over time at the county level. I think that's what's gonna be very interesting in the next months or so. That's all for Coronavirus DataViz Hackathon Part 1, Popular Coronavirus DataViz. In the coming episodes, we are going to build up this line chart using D3 and React from scratch. So stay tuned.